What's up guys? This week we take a look at a saucy picture from our favorite number 7 for Valentine's Day and we dig into that rainy mess that was our first preseason matchup in Nashville. All that and more coming up. Welcome to the show, 5 Strap Fam. I'm AJ, this is Tanner McLeod. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button. First up, we have a Valentine's Day type of uh, homage, and we have Tito uh, really showing his stuff here. Uh, but I think the real winner is Joseph Martinez, our number seven, just showing out. He is fearless, clearly. And uh, can't laugh at yourself, <laughs> then I don't know what else because this this is going to be Ooh. probably banter in the locker room for the entirety of the season. Absolutely, he's not going to let this down. And uh, I, don't, I don't think he cares, it looks awesome. You do, you, Joseph, exactly. And uh, we're going to read some of the best captions that uh, you guys wrote on Instagram. So let's see, we have Ryan O'Connor saying that feeling when you score. Please right. someone throw him a rose after a hat trick so he can just do that and pose to the cameras during the season. We have uh, I am Alicia D. Uh, that one friend you can't take anywhere. Crying face, crying face, crying face. Or crying happy face, happy face. Um, we have Anthony Sibley with I'll always score with you, girl. Oh, dear. Oh, boy. Yeah, these start to degrade a little bit after that, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, Jensen Brock wrote, uh, just because there's a goalie doesn't mean you can't score. Yeah, well, with that, uh, <laughs> we have uh, a limitless banter, I'm sure, for uh, the entire season. I mean, my God, but... Uh, <laughs> That's just going to be thrown up on Twitter every time he scores. That should be like, when they it put like a, like a picture on the Halo board when he scores, right. it should just be that one. So everyone can just see him just with that. Right. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> but for context, uh, this is from MLS Media Day. And so uh, a few members from many teams around the league did a photo like this with a rose. Uh, they, I guess, were given free reign. But Joseph Martinez, he's the person that really decided just to really go for it 100,000 percent man I can only just, imagine what Bobby Boswell would have done ah oh, dang it yeah it's just yep indeed indeed well speaking of Bobby Boswell he has retired our favorite Twitter fiend uh, he's just incredible uh, with the pants but you know he has called it a career finally and uh, you know he's uh, he was only here for a hot minute he only got about what like you know, a few minutes in our very last game, but you know, uh, he has a warm place in our hearts because of his banter. I mean, he seemed to have a you know a warm affection for even just a short time here, and you know, moving back to Houston, settling down with his family. You know, again, wish him nothing but the best. Had a really solid MLS career by all intents and purposes, but just please stay on the Twitter if for some reason you're watching Bobby, because we love that and you bring joy to our hearts like Joseph brings roses. Indeed, indeed. And, uh, you know, we're going to go through some of his best tweets uh, here. Uh, we'll kind of show that a little bit. Uh, man was a funny person. Yeah, he, again, like... Just he's talk, not dead. He's no, not dead he's or not anything. he's not dead, so I don't know why it's something he's, like... You he's know, a funny person, he's sorry. He's a funny person, yeah. <laughs> like, no. Is and hopefully will continue to be a funny person. I mean... Right. The white Messi, sure, even though I'm pretty sure Messi's already white, but that's not, you know, you know why not tell Tata that in your, in your, in your exit interview? Exactly. I mean, genuinely, this guy was just fantastic, and again, wish him nothing but the best in retirement, and thank you for bringing joy to our hearts. And some amazing news out of Atlanta United 2 today, Kevin Barajas, a 21-year-old midfielder who made it through the dream tryouts this past December, has been signed to a contract with the USL team. Truly just an, an awesome story. Absolutely. Yeah, and he's an Atlanta area native. Uh, he worked with Tony Annan, the academy director. And so he kind of had a one up maybe, but, uh, you know, going from hopeful to a USL contract, that's just insane. I, uh, I'm kind of envious of the guy. Although, he's probably got way more soccer talent than I ever have. I mean, he was a four-year starter at Kentucky. Well, I mean, a yeah. starter, but a four-year player at Kentucky. So, a Division One program. So, he's got that experience. And yeah. you know, having made it through a tryout, having, you know, not being an academy player or a current professional, he's giving everything. And you know that he was giving everything. And he's going to continue to do that. And being a native, you know he already probably loves this shirt and has been to a few games. Yeah. And he wants a chance to play for the first team. And, I mean, that's the whole point of it. You mm -hmm. work hard. You play your ass off. 
and you know he 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 could be there. Who knows? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the part you love about this club is that you know you go out there, you work hard, and you're gonna get those chances. I think right. that's at least the vibe that we've gotten. Mm-hmm. So again, I think we wish him nothing but the best, and I genuinely look forward to seeing what he offers in an Atlanta United t-shirt this spring. And Atlanta United lawyers back at it again with the green cards. Romario Williams is now on a green card, which means one less international slot. Indeed, yeah. And so by our count, we have nine international players for eight international slots. So one player has to be uh, getting another green card. So maybe LGP. He's been rumored. Uh, other than that, we have no idea. I but have no idea. These uh, these crack international lawyers, uh, they are doing work. Clearly. I mean, it's just like, you get a green card. You get a green card. Exactly. I mean, genuinely, like, it's just, let's pick someone green card. I mean, Grussell will get yeah. one at some point. Actually, he might get, would it be a green card? Is he yeah. getting married to an American? I don't know how that whole thing works. Yeah, but we're not sure. Yeah. I mean, mm, he's yeah. probably a potential <laughs> guy that, I mean, having already spent years in the United States playing in college, yeah. I think he's probably pretty close to getting something. Right. So, I mean, he could be an option. I mean, mm. genuinely, like, they're really good at doing what they're doing. We were worrying about it, and they're like, whoa, guys, we got this. Exactly. Calm down. And guys, we finally had a match to talk about. The first preseason match of 2018, and it was in Nashville. Their really, really fine stadium, actually, uh, First Tennessee Park. And, uh, you know, we we made the trip up there. Uh, Tanner, unfortunately, uh, you were not able to. But, uh, man, a fantastic experience, but definitely very, very rainy. Um, and a good showing for the boys with a 3-1 win. Uh, but it was Nashville SC's very first match ever. And their supporters group uh, really did a really good job, actually. They, uh, they were loud. They had their own chance. And it was uh, an overall... Uh, just a very, very uh, welcome experience back into soccer. But uh, for you, Tanner, like, uh, what, what were the uh, standout, um, you know, things that you saw from that match? Well, I can tell you what wasn't standout. That was the Nashville commentary on the stream. <laughs> I never want to listen to that ever again in my life. Yikes. Ooh. However. Yeah. The, 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 well, the pitch wasn't very great, but yeah. I think that you, there, you can draw some some nice conclusions from it. You know, yep. they definitely need some time to play together mm-hmm. on a good pitch for all that to blend together. Because I think yep. a couple of times you saw maybe Miggy and Darlington Nagby in some of the same positions at the same time, and maybe yep. things were a bit too tight. But from what I've been Bark told, it was well, a yeah. really small pitch to begin with. Yeah. So there wasn't a lot of space, so it wasn't conducive to how United play. Right. But, you know, I was very, you know, happy to see Nagby play well in those conditions. You know, he had the shot off the post from outside the box. I thought that in the second half he had some really clever passes and, you know, set up a couple goals. And so I'm excited to see what he can do on a field where the ball actually moves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I think there were some some other promising things in there. But, you know, I I liked what Nagby saw. But I've been just on Nagby the the whole time ever since. For sure. For sure. And I agree. Like, for me, he was the man of the match. Uh, He definitely was controlling the game. He played the most minutes. Uh, he was only taken out in like the 78th minute. Uh, probably played the longest, except for maybe LGP. And yeah, with his assist to Vasquez, yeah, I mean he, you know, he was often popping up in just like acres of space in the, the middle of the park. Uh, so he was able to just pick out passes even despite the uh, really crappy conditions. And so uh, for me, you know, he did the best uh, in despite the conditions um, where you know maybe other people were not able to show as much as they were able to show he was really showing a lot um, but were there other people that uh, you know stood out to you during that game yeah I mean I think Vasquez you know he took his goal well or Mario Williams the same thing I yep. think that could be a very interesting battle to see who can take up that that mm-hmm. second striker position either as you know coming off the bench and getting goals or exactly. you know spelling Joseph if he needs it which right. I mean that's with the, the matches battle. that's gonna happen you know mm-hmm. if he if anyone in that front line goes down you know who can play there um, so that's I'm really the battle yeah it is I mean because I mean, they're both gonna be young Mario? good players it's gonna be Brandon Vasquez yeah so I mean I'm, I'm interested to see that and you know both have talent both have potential i think yeah. probably vasquez might have more on that potential upside because of his age absolutely because he, sure. he's younger um right but yeah uh, in terms of romario williams he almost has nothing left to prove in usl it's one of those like he 
scored a bunch of goals at Charleston Battery last year. Uh, and then also for Brandon Vasquez, you know, he when he came on, he always played well. Uh, minus the red card. Minus the red card, where it was. A I, bit that red card was just that just. Eh. Yeah, but you know, it was during uh, an innocuous part of the the, the match already. Um, so you know, uh, he didn't really affect proceedings, uh, app, you know, that much. But uh, I did you know, goal against RSL though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. He he took it one time, and you know, uh, and that was great. And so uh, for for that, I think it's uh, you know. Both of them have a, a big, big shout of um, being the primary backup to Joseph. Now, if both of them make the squad or if it's one of them hits USL, that's probably the position battle in uh, preseason. Yeah. I also think something else that was interesting is, obviously, he didn't have a lot of space, so he couldn't show a lot, but Barco did have flashes here and there. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I can think of uh, one set piece he had off the right-hand side in the first half that it was low, it had pace, I thought it was a great ball, and I think that's interesting because now, you know, you're getting, I think, really good, you know, right-footed delivery because you're already going to get that yes. from Mickey off the left, so now you have more of an option when it comes to corners and free kicks in the area because, obviously... Barco is not going to be in the area on free kicks. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if you have quality coming in from those kicks, you know, that really puts you at an advantage if, you know, Indeed. you can drop it on the head of an LGP or even a Joseph who can out jump everyone. Right. So Indeed. I think, you know, that that was interesting. But, you know, the way that United play mm -hmm. is conducive to a pitch that moves fast mm -hmm. and that has a lot of space. Right. So the bends, basically. Yeah. So I'm interested to see, you know, especially, you know, against Charleston and those teams this coming weekend, Indeed. how they can mm -hmm. do on a pitch that moves and maybe a bit more space. Right. Um, so hopefully the weather holds yes, because please. yeah the conditions uh, they were pretty laughable in this match uh, oftentimes uh, in that infield of uh, First Tennessee Park it just died in front of goal and that's primarily almost how Joseph Martinez got his first goal uh, nice little stare down of the Nashville fans, yeah by absolutely the way. that was I think he's clearly trying to be like hey you guys aren't there yet don't yeah. worry <laughs> I mean I definitely think he he's trying I love it. He's kind of that player that if he's not on your team, you hate him because yeah. of his like swagger. Yeah. But if he plays for you, you absolutely oh, you love him. Exactly. So like, I'm I'm really just looking forward to that more often. Just that yeah. stare down. I just love it. I just genuinely <laughs> his his fiery just can, you yeah. know his demeanor can sometimes be a bit negative after games, but also it's just like you love it. He just wants to win. He wants exactly. to score goals. It's that that fierce competitor in, in him, and uh, you know you you want to see that fire. So it's a good thing. Like you know even though you know we're talking about you know his uh, his celebration, which is as muted as anybody, but he's showing fire. It's it's strange. It's a yeah. it's a you know kind of conundrum. Guy. But, um, but in terms of uh, players that maybe uh, did not have the best performance, possibly, um, and given this is a caveat, you know, this is the first match of preseason. On a really crap pitch. Yeah. I mean, genuinely, I've had Sunday League games called off for, like, less than that. And sure. I, I was, when I, I had no idea until I saw the stream yeah. what the conditions were, and my thoughts yeah. were, get through it, don't get hurt, just, you know, be safe. And that's I, so as yeah, far as I'm that concerned, was all, it, all it, it, it was it sure. was a wash. Right. No pun intended, by yeah. the way. But you know, I think Gressel didn't really do too much for me in the first half. Yeah, I think um, he was still trying to get his bearings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, he didn't really have great overlapping support from the fullback either. Right. Um. So it's just hard for me to be harsh on any one player though against because of those conditions. But yeah. I think this weekend will definitely be a much bigger you know mm -hmm. judge of who's where and whatnot. But yeah. I think yeah, for, for me it's uh, you know Loretta what's being in the back line. Uh, I think it's weird. It, it's a, it's another instance that we need more depth uh, because you know uh, when he when he moved into uh, more of the DM role in the second half, it was a little bit more assured. Even though uh, he was on the pitch uh, when you know uh, Nashville SC scored their first goal, but uh, it it just seemed a little bit where uh, you know chasing down a quicker player it's a little tougher as uh, as the main guy and as the season wears on um you know it's going to be very very tough if he's you know uh, in a position where he might be exploited so uh for for me you know he's not a center back uh even though he, seemingly he can fill in tata thinks but uh you know i think definitely like that's a position we need to fill um, 
and Zizzo. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it's his first showing. Um, he's, you know, he's deaf. I think that's that's what I don't like that he's wearing Carlos Carmona's shirt either. So yeah, that was weird it was, too. It was just yeah. weird seeing 14 <laughs> and it not be Carmona. Right. It, yeah, the, the first time seeing him uh, bomb down the right and it was 14, it was it, it definitely uh, is a little jarring at first. It's uh, it's like, oh wait, who's it? Oh, wow, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, and uh, so I, I think you know we definitely want to see more from Zizzo, uh, but I think uh, you know I think. Maybe just the it was the the right side of the pitch where yeah, it was just I mean, harder to play. Trying to get up and trying to get back in that just yeah. swamp is just difficult. So honestly, right. it might not have been great. I'm I'm just giving everyone a pass if they didn't yeah. look great. Just I'm just gonna For give, sure. unless someone no one was like just catastrophic. No. Just like where I was just like, why are you playing soccer? <laughs> so I mean, again, it's just I'm just gonna give them. Right. If they do that again this weekend and the weather holds and it's yeah. a good pitch, and it's gonna be like, okay, now Indeed. I have questions. But I definitely agree right. with you. In terms of like they they need they need someone to play central midfield and they need mm. someone to play center back and I mean or you can maybe sign another person to play right back and move Escobar into the middle but I think that's yeah. maybe kind of more in the future and not yeah. now and, and what we have to remember yeah like Parky didn't play um, yeah. you know a few other players did not play so this is not you know uh, what the lineup is really going to look like yet or anything like that um, yeah Tito wasn't in there as well. Um, so, you know, I think we, we take all of this with a grain of salt, but just as an evaluation of the first preseason match, you know, um, you know, we took our chances well, we were clinical, but, uh, you know, there's there a, lot a lot to... of them. Their keeper played well. I'll give the him that. keeper did play well. He had a couple sure. of really good saves that right. I was, I was impressed by. And mm -hmm. I mean, I think on another day on a not pitch like that, yeah. it's probably a lot worse for Nashville. I mean, again, it's their yeah. first game and, you know. Uh -huh. They, they played hard, I will give them that, you know, yeah. and obviously they have a long way to go, and their USL side of them, like, they're having mm -hmm. the money pumped in right. that first season like Atlanta United had, where they're gonna, they're a straight up an MLS team, right. so you're having these signings, so you know, obviously there, there's not a real high expectation there yet, and mm -hmm. I think we'll, it'll be interesting to see how they play against Atlanta United too, because I think a yeah. lot of the players that you saw coming in at the end of the game, right. they'll be playing them multiple times this coming Indeed. season in the Indeed. USL season, so right. I think that'll be a more, you know, of a barometer for where they are, mm -hmm. Um, that'll be I, interesting to see. Yeah, and I think what I appreciated from Nashville SC was that they gave us a good game in that they didn't sit back the entire time. They actually tried to play, you know, and with that, you know, we got a fairly open game in that sense, uh, even though, you know, uh, I think the puddles got, uh, you know, more of the, the chances than we did. Uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, I think, you know, overall it's a... Uh, good challenge for preseason going on the road um, to really see what uh, the team is made of and you know kind of build that camaraderie they have a nice story to tell before um, you know and a lot of nice experiences probably before uh, the season actually starts so good stuff uh, from the team um, very very excited to see their uh, you know kind of a cup challenge type of thing that uh, we have going on in the next two weekends. And so, uh, you know, we'll see how they get on against MLS caliber talent uh, who are in the the same kind of uh, uh, space that we are in. You know, we're uh, trying to get ready for the season. And so, you know, no one's really at uh, their peak of power yet. So, um, you know, we'll have more stuff coming up for the match uh, on Saturday, for uh, Wednesday as well. But uh, yeah, and you know we'll get to, to see them against some you know better talent, uh, obviously. And uh, yeah, we have that. And you know, don't forget we have our vlog from the Nashville SC match as well. So that'll be uh, coming up soon. And also we have. Uh, a brand new series of 10 things you didn't know about player uh, to be named here. Uh, and so uh, check those out when they come out this week. 
And also, please check out the fan cams we had. AJ and I, well, mostly AJ, I'll be talking, but AJ will be hosting fan cams after all matches. Whether it's home or away, we'll be at the viewing parties, we'll be in the gulch after the match. Please come by and talk to us because we really do want to hear what you guys have to say. It's fan TV, you know, it's what we think about the club, how we feel things are going. So we want to hear from all you guys. We want you guys to be involved, not just on Twitter, not just in the comments, but on the videos. We want to see you here. So please, just let us know, hit us up, we'll say where we're going to be, and come talk to us. And this week, we have a bit of a Valentine's Day themed question of the day. And the question goes, well, most to our ladies, what's sexier, Joseph Martinez with a rose in his mouth, or Joseph Martinez scoring a goal? <laughs> yep, and uh, you know, let us know in the comments below. But uh, that's it for today. I'm AJ, this is Tanner. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.